One of the most important characters in the evolution of humans is the increase in brain size that we've seen over the last two and a half million years. If we look at our Australopithecine ancestors two and a half million years ago, to the variation that we see in living humans today, what we see is basically a threefold increase in brain size. Now, some of that increase in brain size has to do with increasing body size. Recall that the Australopithecines were much smaller bodied than our living humans today. But above and beyond that increase in body size, there's a proportional increase in brain size, what we refer to as encephalization. This is something we've already talked about a little bit with the origin of the genus Homo, but it's worth talking more about it because it's such a critical factor in human evolution. You could argue that the origin of bipedality in Australopithecines some five million years ago, or even in their ancestors, is arguably the most important trait in the divergence of the human lineage from our ape ancestry. However, if that's the case, the expansion of our brains and the prioritization of our brains in the last two million years is clearly the most important trait in establishing us as humans and making us the way that we are today. Now, to understand why this is the case, we need to think about what the brain is from an adaptive and an evolutionary standpoint. The brain can do a vast number of things. It doesn't just make you smarter, it makes you more adaptable, but adaptable in really novel ways when it comes to how evolution operates. This adaptability and the plasticity that an evolving brain allows for gives us tremendous flexibility to occupy different environments, solve problems in creative ways, but also fundamentally changes our relationship to the environment and our relationship to other humans. To think about this a little bit, I like to use the example of a hat. Our brain makes us very good at wearing hats. We can fit hats on our head because we have an expanded frontal lobe and a large brain in general. Contrast this to the apes, where they sadly cannot wear hats. But there's more to this example than merely fitting the hat on your head. A hat indicates something about who you are. Go back 100 years ago or 150 years ago, and you'll notice in photographs and drawings that oftentimes people of different populations wore different hats as a way of distinguishing who they were. You can still see this in parts of the world today. And that's just one example of how people distinguish themselves, but even today we wear hats as a way of indicating and saying something about who we are. And other people can interpret those signals and infer their own judgment about what they represent. We're only able to make these inferences because of how our brain has evolved to provide us with tremendous flexibility and complexity in how we interact with each other. Humans are the major part of our environment. Our environment is not just the physical landscape, but the other humans we interact with, the social circles we occupy, the people we know, even the people we don't know but we might encounter. Take this hat, for example. There's a few things we can say about this hat. Obviously, it's blue. It's a baseball-style cap. But there are these objects on the cap which might not have any inherent meaning, but we recognize them as letters. We recognize them as letters that in this case spell words, and those words represent the physical place and the institution that I'm part of, Wellesley College. Those symbolic elements are illustrative of how important and critical the brain is to our survival. Throughout the course of the Pleistocene, the increasing size of the brain, the increasing prioritization of the brain, reflects an adaptation to a human cultural environment, a biocultural evolutionary model.